I spent probably all up 13 years in government, uh, state government. Um, spent a bit of time in the Commonwealth. I was involved with ATSIC. Um, I've been involved with community organisations, uh, building organisations in, in Perth here. Um, and I've been a lot in the social community area. And I was in government and I thought I'd get out of government and go into business because I didn't want to be in my early 50s and think I should have got out 10 years ago. So I did it in my early to mid-40s so that when I'm in my early to mid-50s, I might be heading to retirement. And one of the things I've found, I do coaching, mentoring and leadership along with everything affairs from a strategic to a practical level. And one of the reasons for that was I looked at what was happening in the, I guess, the boom that when it first started. And I looked at where our people were and we, we were part of it. We were, we were seen as recipients of the economy, not contributors to it. And I, I, said, well, I said to myself, well, the next time this boom comes, and I use the analogy of a train station and a train leaving that station, we weren't even in the car park to get onto the train. The next time it come, I wanted to be in the front carriage. And so I went into the area that I did because I saw a number of people going into the recruitment area and going joint ventures and mining and civil and earth moving and all different things. And, and I, I didn't like the idea of putting diesel into machines because it cost a lot of money. And I was involved in, a, in another, in a company um, that we were heading down a path where we had a mining and civil services company, a concrete construction company. We were doing employment, we had a contract with uh, transfer, maintaining uh, Homesworth House. So we had a, a lot of things happening. And I was a bit uncomfortable with it all because I don't know nothing about machines. My dad's a machine operator, I'm not. I, I don't know nothing about concrete other than walking on it. And I don't know a lot about painting. I've got a son that paints, so I don't paint. But I know about people. So I said, look, I want to carve up this business. And I, I went out and set up GCO Consulting. Because I use the analogy of pouring not diesel into machines, but knowledge and information into people. And then getting that back from people. Because the work that I do, I learn just as much from people that participate in what I do than I actually give them. So when I, I do the work that I do for resource and industry, I also do with public service and the community sector. And from this conference, what I've got out, there's two things that I've got out that really struck to me was a company called Ewan, that through their business, they've actually created an opportunity for four young Aboriginal girls to participate in the World Championship of Sailing. That's got nothing to do with business, but it's got a lot to do with people. And we had three young people in an earlier workshop that spoke about their experiences in the youth and how one young fellow stood up here and spoke about their youth suicide and what they were looking at doing to try and address some of that. And they're the things and the values of those things that mean most to me. Business is a vehicle to get to those things. And I, I don't know if I'm a good businessman or successful. All I know is that we can, good people do good things. And I believe I'm a good person and I'm doing good things because if we don't do the good things, and Duncan, you do, you're a good person and you do good things, you're in a system that doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I say that with all respect because I know Duncan, but I don't know Duncan all that well, but I know that there's a lot of non Aboriginal people that are married into our families, that are part of our families that are here and that are part of the industry and the things that we do, that from our side of things, we also need to accept that and embrace that and actually move on together because we can't do it without each other. And whilst I'd like to see more probably Aboriginal presenters at this conference, I don't want to gloss over the fact of other people that are trying to assist in our community because, like I said, good people do good things. And I'm in business having a ball. I, I, I don't know where... You know, people talk about business plans and all those things, and, and they're fine, they've got their place, but at the end of the day, it's how you interact with people, and I think that, you know, you make a difference, and you make a dollar, you make a dollar, and you make a difference. So, I, I guess that's my philosophy on what we do, but I've, you know, I've got a 13 and 15 year old, and nieces and nephews. The conversations that they have is different to what I have. So each passing generation, we're gonna have, like I said to these guys, we went to America, one, and I saw, you saw the stats from Natalie Walker this morning. Australia 
Our people in this country are the sleeping giant of the world because we've got it. We have got it. And the, when we, and Marcy Langdon touched on it, when we get rid of the victim mentality that we are the victim, we know we're no victims of anyone no more. We, we are in a, in a position that this country has given us now access and opportunity to be anything we want. And if we continue from our community to think well, we can't do it, and it's in our psyche we can't because a lot of our people have been conditioned around this stuff, then we won't do it. If we start to change the conversation and say we will do it and we're going to do it, and I'm part of a nation in the southwest that's on the moon, and once we get all the pieces that we're putting together over the last 10, 15 years, we're going to come out and we're going to be a force. And the rest of this country are going to, we're going to be a force in the world on business because the brief introduction I had to the US, Canada, the UK, South Africa, told me and showed me that we're not too far from it. And I've seen Doc Reynolds up there and others that have been in business longer than me and have been trailblazers and others. And we have to pay homage to those people and to those, as David said, that fought the fight, but it's a different fight now. It's one where we can win and it's all there before us if we want it. And my message to our people and our young people is what do you want, what do you want and how bad do you want it because it's there and we're not far from it as, like I said we, it, it's all there and if someone from the northern suburbs of Perth can see it that got kicked out of school at year 10 that had two kids by the time he was 19 that didn't have a job really till he was about 22 can do and be sitting in front of this forum and doing this anyone can so that's my opinion.